Yes. These are ma major general significances from which roots are built and all the roots are using vowels and vowels will be a major color of the root, which will give us general significance. That's how Sanskrit is so transparent. Okay, we stopped here at this, we finished the hymn and uh, I said that we will go through it once more. So I will start with the last what we did. Etam te stomam tu vijata vi pro ratham nadhirah suapa ataksham yadidam agne pratitvam deva pratitvam deva hariyah suarvatiha pa enaja yema. This way we stopped. Um, this hymn. This establishing word stoma, ecstatic priest of our sacrifice born by power, I have made for you as the vehicle for your movement. I am I who am steady in knowledge and skillful in work. Dhirach suapach, it's I all, ataksham, because ataksham is the first person. I kind of as a carpenter, I carved it out of the wood of such substance, this as if the vehicle Rathamna. Uh, if it suits you, yad it agne pratitvam deva haryach, please accept it, haryach, take it, pratiharyach, O God, O Deva. With its help, may we conquer the luminous waters of heaven. Suarvatih apa ena, by it anena jayema, may we conquer. And then we come to the last word, we, uh, which, uh, verse, which we didn't read. To we grivo vrishabho vavridhano ashatru aryach samajati vedach iti mam agnim iti mam agnim amrita avochan barhishmate manave sharma yamsat avishmate manave sharma yamsat uh, i will go straight to my interpretation the bull having powerful neck is growing strong stronger and stronger vavridhanach it is from um, frequentative or uh, this constantly growing as it were stronger and stronger he should drive back all the knowledge ajati some ajati totally back uh, to us vedah the knowledge or the wealth because vedas can be a knowledge and wealth that which is acquired mm. Without the enemy, Ashatru Vedas. It's uh, Vedas uh, in the Nuta. Um, thus the immortal spoke to this flame. Itimam uh, Agnim Amrita Avochan. The immortals Amritaha, the immortal most probably gods or souls Avochan spoke to Agni in this way. He should bring back our wealth or our knowledge without Shatru, yeah? uh, without the enemy. He who is growing stronger and stronger with a great or powerful neck or with many necked. Sri translates the strong necked and then he gives a many necked. So he has many necks, many extensions of his being as it were bull increases in us and drives to us the treasure of knowledge it's kind of interesting how he translates vedas the treasure of knowledge covering both the wealth of the luminous herds because vedas is treasure and knowledge <laughs> so he puts it together the treasure of knowledge that was withheld by our enemy nor is there any to destroy it. So, Ashatru. Uh, with, 
that yeah interesting that was withheld by our enemy that's how he sees it ashatru aryah nor is there any to destroy it um it's um one has to think here for so have the powers immortal spoken to the strength and that he work out peace for the man who enlarges the seat of sacrifice that he work out peace for the man who carries in his hand the oblation so barhishmate manave to the manu to the man barhishmate the one who uh, prepares the place for the sacrifice sharmayam sat he should give this is conjunctive from yam to give he should give or arrange sharma protection or peace shubindo very often pro translates sharman as peace peaceful protection or peaceful bliss havishmate manave sharmayam sat he should arrange sharman protection peaceful protection and bliss for the man who brings the offering havishman i was reading this today morning and it was so meaningful and now i don't see this meaning anymore it's interesting the word ajati it's from root aj to drive forward some ajati uh, and this is uh, let vedic form he should drive together uh, ashatru vedas the luminous wealth of knowledge without enemy bring back or bring together the wealth make it come together from root aj most probably agni is produced he is the driver forward he is the one agni agna from aj yeah. jubinda says it can be from lost root ag to move but uh, it it is most probably root aj uh, from here ajah ajah is the um, the uh, unborn or uh, the goat the goat or the ram who is uh, who is the vehicle of agni actually ajah yeah he is the vehicle of agni he drives agni forward because he is a driver forward hmm. so ajati he should drive together or bring together the vedas and that corresponds to agni so this is the end of the hymn so i wanted to go through this hymns hymn once with you in detail so we could see the whole beauty the treasure of this because uh, rashi was telling that we should do it once yes rashi Nabhi, can you uh, just uh, the hymn that we were just doing right now yes. can you just uh, just say just explain it in two three lines without reading anything just speak it you mean uh, uh translate i have not understood what it means it had uh, too many meanings and too many explorations and too many things have happened so i have not understood what it really means okay the whole hymn or this verse uh, only it's these two the verses the one with the the, the bull ah so the bull with many necks or the powerful necks uh, grow stronger and stronger pavradhana the fire the lord the lord growing from within us growing stronger and stronger he should bring and combine all the, the inner wealth which was stolen from us by the forces of darkness he should combine them with our inner and outer being bring it together without shatru without the enemy without the hurters without those who steal and hide it away he should remove the the enemies and bring it together back to us thus the immortal being spoke to agni that he should furnish or give the powerful and meaningful protection to the man 
who prepares the place for the higher powers of consciousness. Barhishmate, who brings the offering for him, they should create the space in which he will be blissfully protected. So then what happens then? That's it. That's uh, what the immortals called to Agni to create for the man who does the sacrifice, who lit the fire within him, to create for him a sacred space, which will be like a bubble for him in which he may live spiritual life within this set setting, which is not conducive to spirituality, so to say, protected, sharman. Sharman is a sharanam, protection, yeah. Uh, That's why we're also using Agni as a protective protection tool. Yes. Yes, I, yeah. Go ahead. Every, because in my house, whenever I do sessions, healing sessions or channeling sessions, I would walk around with that little fire in the whole house and then uh, that's when I would do it and when I do a session see I'll show you I don't know if if you can see me but can you see this yeah yeah so it's like uh, water then oil then light so I like before me it's not just lamp it's also fire and then I do the thing so that's what I was trying to understand Beautiful. we have to understand it in my reality in my everyday's reality and I could not understand. And just before your session, I was in a small process and I saw a bull and I could not understand what that meant. And so, I, so that's why I was like, oh my God, what is happening here? So I bull is to coming understand. to you. Yeah. Now, I don't mean that way, but at least I should be able to decode when there is something which is immediately there is so much resonance, you know, in like five minutes I switched on and I heard you. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing this. This is beautiful, that light on the, on the, this and water at Bindli's and the oil on the top. Interesting. Yeah, how you manage that. And the light is light on the top of, a light is creating the space, the space of consciousness. Yeah. So when we light the, the, as Shubindu says, when the, the fire broke in the corner, lit the whole universe. Yeah. Everything became visible. The little flame could lit the whole darkness. Darkness failed and fall, fell like a falling cloak from the reclining body of a god. You know, it's from Savage. So the darkness is like a cloak. And so the fire, once it is lit, it creates this sharman, the space in which we are conscious. It might be that beyond certain uh, border, there is no more protection. There is darkness there. Yes? But within our house, it is the... And the major center of the house, the fire, the light which is coming through. It's a beautiful image, actually. And, by the way, when you spoke about this, what came to my mind is what uh, Shirobindo explains about aspiration. Uh, somewhere I was um, using it for my course on aspiration. And I took it from the Rig Veda. He says that uh, the, the fire is to be constantly lit and flame constantly because, because only then uh, the, the illuminations which come to us as the grace answering to our call will not be stolen by the powers of darkness. Wow. He, he, pr <laughs> he protects all the grace, grace. Otherwise, the, if we do not, the the power which comes from above cannot protect itself. It needs a protector on this side, and the protector on this side is the flame, the Agni. Lovely, can you say that last uh, to last sentence, uh, some, which you were talking about fire? I, yeah. Oh, it breaks, yeah, the voices break. Vladimir, uh, um, before you explain, I want to show you this also, because can you see this? This is mother's symbol. Yeah. It's a lamp. So I put a lamp in it when I do this. Can you see the little tea light? Yeah, yeah. 
and for me again it is like what you were saying exactly because it lights for like many many hours and i, I don't know why i do it but now i understand why i do it because you're saying that you know illumination is there so when the grace comes at least nobody else is stealing it how right. wonderful thank you vladimir you're awesome you're genius well it is shirobindo is genius he spoke about it we oh, just picked yeah. it up for ourselves yes i mean i mean to say that to actually be able to understand in a active way is important for me and i never know the reasons why i am doing this why am i putting a lamp in mother symbol every night when i am uh, coming to this room i don't know why i am doing it but i am doing it you know what i mean it's not yeah. a ritual like a, a religion or you know okay god i don't i don't associate anything this is something i must do that's it yeah, you know yeah, and to yeah. really explain so i'm grateful thank you sorry uh, you can thank explain you. it to me. thank you yes uh, it's it's mm-hmm. automatically happening because we yes because you are and the grown. other way of yeah. uh, looking at it is also what we discussed a few days back that it is the psychic being that is the protection mm-hmm. agni is the psychic being and that is why nachiketa gets that as the second boon yes absolutely that is the psychic flame it is the flame within their heart that aspiration the true aspiration within the heart is the flame and uh, that is the protector and once it is flaming constantly then the grace the, the powers of the grace which come to the sacrifice which are these gods descending he brings down the gods they will these powers will not be stolen by panis and put into the subconscious cave they can act they can become activated they can do the job because the fire is here without the fire there is no sacrifice as shubhendra says sacrifice is impossible if fire is not lit that's why everything starts with agni agni me hele i seek the divine flame with adoration you yeah, know this is the first phrase of the veda because with this flame everything is possible it's the center of transformation the the hotar the invoker all the powers he brings all the treasures bestows upon us he creates sharman he creates the charmant in french yeah? he creates the the beauty or the space for us the divine space in which we can live the divine life so parishmate manave sharma yam sat may he arrange for us the divine space for the man who is ready to do the sacrifice for the man who has something to offer to the divine his being his life his thoughts his feelings yeah but a person uh, the the readiness means that uh, agni is doing its work right yeah absolutely yeah it's only him can do this we can't do it we will have to agree and to to do the we have to kindle the fire and keep it Uh, as shubhendra says keep the flame trimmed yeah keep the lamp trimmed and clean and our temple clean that's what we have to do and we have to be barhishman barhishman the one who puts the barhis barhis is the grass sacrificial grass around the flame for the gods to take their place so barhis is the grass on which the gods sit around the fire so you invite and it is from root brich to extend we have to extend the inner space for the higher powers of consciousness to take place what would, hmm. would barhis mean uh, in the uh, in the body's context what would it mean when it, when we look at it you have to vacate vacate the space you have to empty it you have to prepare it for the divine powers or gods to come down you cannot invite them into the uh, stiffy stuffy space of yours which is full of uh, your own stuff yeah? it needs to be prepared you have to put barhis you make it sacred for them yeah this you must do yeah this fire will not do for you you know he will burn you uh, but uh, 
you prepare the space, you kindle the fire and let him do the work. He will do the major work. He will bring the gods. Then, and uh, you make an offering. Yeah. Uh, no, I was saying that, uh, so it's always a difficult choice that uh, one is that one uh, uh, gets into the quieter space and then choose a conducive space, which is apt for keeping the Agni alive. Or one stays in a very difficult terrain and it's, I mean, I'm just talking about the regular life problems. Mm -hmm. So if on the everyday basis, it's so difficult to remember to keep the Agni alive if the the, the disturbance is happening at, at a very, um, like, it's happening too soon and then it's very difficult to keep the Agni alive. But if you have that space and conducive space externally, then it's easy to keep it alive internally as well. So Good. Should be there. Do do ex externally if it helps. Yeah, create your temple, create your I don't know puja room. Do something. Yeah, like uh, Rashi is doing. She is kindling the fire. Somehow it something compels her to do it. Something compels me. To, I have a beautiful uh, the. A meditation room here on the floor where I, somehow I'm drawn to go and to sit there in front of Sri Aurobindo's mother picture. <laughs> I do not know why. If it, if I'm, I'm a totally adult. I understand that this is an inner presence. Why should I go to somewhere else externally and sit in front of the picture? Uh, I have pictures of them here and Krishna in front of me. Why should I go to that room? But I do. Um, something pushes me there. It feels like I enter into another space, into the sacred space, where I can come down or leave behind all those other, you know, involvements which are kind of pulling me away from my inner commitment. So, and I feel that purity when I enter there. And I feel that I am now in the sacred bubble, in this Sharman. Sharman is that protected space, yeah, sacred space. By the way, we should create the sacred space everywhere. Agni for us should create it wherever we are. I'm sitting at this table. This is my sacred space. Yeah, that's where I'm studying Vedas. Uh, wherever I am, I have to create this. Agni has to create for me, who is offering my life, Barhishman. I am Barhishman. I am preparing and inviting all the powers to take charge of my activities. And so I am doing it constantly, everywhere. Yeah, And that is the way you have to live. It's simple, actually. Only we have to remember. It's yep. part of our culture and inheritance. I remember when I was tiny, very little, I used to remember my grandmother was a, a, prof, a teacher of uh, Sanskrit and Hindi in high school. And when she used to have a bath in the morning, I would hear her saying prayers. And I used to think, how can you have a bath and do the prayers together? It was so weird. But then when you, do, you grow up, you see that the tree is sacred. You put a light in Tulsi, you put a agarbatti. Everything in the kitchen, when you make something, you make for a little piece of uh, roti for the cow. You know, every process that you do yeah. in your daily life, because you, it's not religious. It mm -hmm. is just bringing sacredness and an yeah. element of spirit and a largeness to your life. Mm -hmm. I never lived like this. I was a hardcore science person. I didn't mm -hmm. even go to a temple or believe in a god. You know, but now I have more gods than even I know names of. <laughs> <laughs> I see, like, just like, and if you if you come to my house, everybody says, "Is it a temple or what?" Because everywhere I've created these sacred orders, which are reminder of some element of the spirit. So what you're seeing, it really works. People walk in and they feel, "Oh my God, what kind of energy!" So what happens is that I am constantly reminded of the largeness of our purpose, the largeness of who we are versus what uh, Preetu is saying, the daily chaos and people and thoughts and conversations, the daily low, low, lower, uh, you know, energies are all the time there. So again and again, you need reminders to come back to your largeness. And I guess a sacred space or a sacred uh, activity, uh, even if it is as tiny as putting a tea light, it takes like 
30 seconds to light it and put it in the uh, mother symbol. But for me, it, it, uh, my brain or subconscious in, gets indicated, okay, now things are going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I totally understand uh, mm -hmm. the power of what you're saying. But I want to ask the, the question when you said, uh, then it, it is protected, then it won't be stolen by the Panis and put hidden in the cave of subconscious. What does that mean? Um, well, the whole hymn is about this. You remember we went through. Uh, let us look into it, and that may be an answer uh, will answer your question. So you remember it started with the mother. I will read my very uh, this is my interpretation, but it will go step by step. The young mother keeps him hidden in her body, the youth, the prince, and gives him not to his father. Though she keeps him so tight within her bosom, she does not diminish his growth, breath, power. Those who are born on earth, Janasach, can see him deep within, established as the leader of their difficult ascent. This is the fire within. Yeah? It is interesting to note here that uh, the mother earth does not give Agni to his father heaven. She keeps him tight within herself, but she does not diminish his strength, his growth. She will deliver him only when she herself will become great and vast, mature, Mahishi, it's in the next verse, widely developed. So he developing in her, growing in her, develops her as it were. And it is only those who are born here on earth in the mother, as it were, can see him established deep within themselves as the leader of their difficult evolutionary path upward towards the heaven, but without leaving the matter. This is the important part. So it has to happen here within the body. In other words, growth of consciousness is to be undertaken in the material body. All the levels have to be present and active within the material frame. And that, that is the work of the sacrifice, the work of the Aryan, the work all men have come here to accomplish. That is how they can see him advancing on the path. Who is this prince? Another verse. O young mother, whom you bear so close to yourself, pressing him into yourself uh, as if forming and molding him into a body. Who is he whom you deliver when you are wide and mature, when you are queen? Many seasons have passed before he could finally be delivered. I saw him being born from the mother. Peshi, Bibharshi, these are the, the questions. I saw him from afar shining with one pointed task of golden light making his weapon of conquest. I offered him an amrita of all the parts of my being. What can they do to me, those who know neither Indra, the divine mind, nor the divine word? This is starting these oppositions, the dark forces who do not know the divine mind or the divine word. The Rishi says that he has offered to Agni all the separate parts of his being one by one in their essence, Amrita. But there are other forces of darkness and confinement who do not offer him but obstruct his growth. They do not know Indra, the divine mind, and his action upon our consciousness. They do not speak the word that which stirs within the darkness, opening it to its action from above. The word and the mind are the two foundations of the Veda. Yeah, the Rishi speaks. I saw him secretly approaching from afar plane of his, from his own domain, his inbuilt within. It looked like an ecstatic movement of the luminous herds of many forms of brightness and brightness. None of those who confined could seize upon them the herds of light. 
for he was already born. He was born and they can't take these lights again into the darkness. For those rays of light who got weary and old became young again. Those who were pale and fading became full of light again because he was born. It is a description of the experience of the Rishi seeing Agni moving towards the surface of consciousness from the depth of his being, from his own plane, Kshetra, where he is at home, towards the plane where he is not yet at home, towards the surface. His movement involves the movement of luminous herds of all kinds of forms and brightness. It was like an ecstatic moment of light. It's, I think it's the birth of the psychic being which we have to still experience. But none of those who confined could seize on them anymore, on these brightnesses for he was already born, reviving their energies. Who are these beings who could separate my strength from the luminous herds of knowledge, against whom there is no protector? Nobody can protect us from these separators, confiners, for they steal secretly without even a fight. Those who have robbed me of my luminous herds of knowledge should bring them back. For here he comes, the one who sees, who should find and drive them back. That's why this, he should bring them back, ajati, ashatru vedas. Yes, that's the last word. He should bring back because he is born. He can bring all stolen wealth and luminosity which is hidden in the subconscious cave. He can bring it forward. It is a crucial question for all Vedic psychology. Who are they who constantly separate our strengths from the light of knowledge? Why our light of knowledge and strength, power, do not go together? Why power is without knowledge and knowledge is without power? We are constantly in this dilemma. You know? We know the truth, but we can't live it. We live falsehood and uh, knowing the truth separately. Why they are separated? And why they are they have such a, an easy access as if naturally robbing us of our light, our heavenly wealth. Who are these robbers? So the Rishi is declaring to them that they will not be able anymore to steal the light of knowledge because he is already born. He can see them in the darkness and bring all the stolen herds back to us. And so on. And it is Shunak Shepa's story, which we looked into. Um, Shunak Shepa, the birth of the psychic being and liberation by the mother. Um, and we are coming to the end where Agni should bring to us this, this Ashatru. The bull having powerful neck is growing stronger and stronger. He should drive back all the knowledge without the enemy. Thus the immortal spoke to this flame. The immortals means the godheads. The godheads whom he activates in this sacrifice. Give protection to man who prepares the seat of sacrifice in himself. Give protection to man who has the offering to the gods. So I just gave you the, the outline of what uh, this verse is about. So he is born within the nature, he grows, he comes to the front and he brings all our luminous wealth back, activates it in our life, creates for us Sharman, creates for us the space in which we can sustain our spiritual consciousness. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, Vladimir, but what I'm feeling that it is so amazing that this is sounds uh, individualistic also and collective also. Is yeah, it true? Absolutely. It is more, it is, it is archetypal. It is applicable to every individual. It is speaking about every one of us. 
is not for me only or for you or for somebody who is ready for someone who is not ready it is the, the, the power growing within the nature regardless of, of what you think about it <laughs> It's powerful, yes. Weather is uh, so fundamental for all of us. If we could only see it, how beautiful it is. It's poetic, it's philosophical, it's psychological, it's mantric, it is artistic, it is everything. It is all the elements put together and it, uh, in the right uh, measure, in the right um, harmony. Great, I will stop here and we will start next verse, which is even more powerful, where Agni is identified with each Godhead and how, and we will look into it, how Agni relates to each of the greatest Godheads. Okay, um, I'm closing with mantra. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santo Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kashchit Dukha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Shanti